Hello, long time no see. Um, my name's Kim. I am here with wonderful Sandra from Stellarly Astrology, and we are going to talk Mars retrograde. I'm already feeling it. Um, I've been hearing stories. Um, you, ha you had a broken bone story, Sandra. I heard yes. about a high blood pressure story. The pressure is mounting people. And um, yeah, it's something to really be aware of for the second half of the year. Mars retrograde, I'll just throw these official dates out, but it doesn't actually start until the 10th of September. It's, um, you know, we're still in August as we record this. So this is a, like a massive story for um, the, the second half of 2020 um, and takes us from that mid-September period through to mid-November. Um, if you've got planets or points in Aries, you need to listen up. Likewise, if you've got um, planets or points in the cardinal signs, you need to listen up and pretty much everybody else because you'll know somebody with planets or points in cardinal signs. What do you reckon about it, Sandra? How are you feeling? Uh, it's, it's, you can feel it already. Mars is very much a forward-moving planet and he is moving very slowly right now. You can feel the tension brewing. Um, and definitely in the area of anyone who's got cardinal seems to have a story at the moment. So it's fun. They already think that Mars is retrograde. I know, I know. I've been like watching it and um, I'm a bit of a Marsy girl myself. And yeah, I'm in a bit of a kind of a state of disbelief too, that we're not even like there yet. And um, the influence of um, yeah, the Mars slowing down is already rather pronounced, but um, that is due to the dance that um, Mars has been having with the planets um, in Capricorn. But I think we should probably start with first things first. Aries does love to be first, um, not always methodical. So yeah, don't mind me racing off to the exciting bit um yeah so usually mars travels through a sign in about six weeks but mars will be in aries for six months that's quite the martian master class um i have mars and aries natally so like i you know i don't mind the the rawness the straightforwardness the kind of in your faceness of this um natal placement um otherwise i'd be disparaging myself and that's not the um, mars in aries way you've got to back yourself um that's what mars in aries says but that is going to get minced up and weird um with the retrograde you can already feel that. You, and I wonder, now that we're really noticing this, what, a good 20 days or so out from retrograde, what it's going to be like when it's the middle of November and he starts to go forward again. Are we going to feel it just as intensely because it's Mars in Aries? Is this, um, is this the inevitable, okay, everything's really crunching to a stop and it's going to move equally as slow to get kick-started again before it passes its shadow point in January. Yeah, I, I just had the image of um, like a train. Like when you stop a train, you, it takes a long time to stop a train and it takes like, you know, just as long to get that train um, moving and up to full speed again. So I think that's a, a good way to think about um, th this process of Mars slowing down and speeding up. And also to the, the directionality of the tracks. Um, you can really, generally, trains only go forward. Um, you know, even when they, they don't do U-turns, at the end um that's a metaphor astrologers often use for um retrograde stations but it's not really a u-turn vibe with this it's stop and it's like right now we've got to move the driver to the other end and you know fire up the other engine it's it's hard work and um you really feel that um uh, the, the concentration i think of from martian speed in Aries, it's home sign down to like, really, we're not going anywhere. It has to be a complete and utter stop. Um, and I think that is going to be really pronounced. Yeah, that analogy is, yes, it is the train grinding to a halt. And when the driver gets out and has to go back to the other end, he's full of rage and impotence and <gasps> released before he gets to the other end. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's a very flash, fast booking train too. Um, I find with Mars, Mars being so direct that it really is 
impotence that we're getting out of this. Um, it is that frustration that isn't just your normal mercurial frustration. It is a deep frustration that will pull you up. Mars in Aries is really primal. Um, so it, it's not that thinking process, as you point out with, um, you know, a Mercury retrograde, for instance, it, it is deep seated. And it's like, you know, it's, it's the blood pumping. And then that going off the boil, like you just kind of stop caring about the things that used to get your juices flowing, whether that is your um, sexual partner, whether that is, you know, leaping out of bed for, you know, the, the job that you love to do, maybe you're not going to love it anymore. Like you, your will, your motivation, that, that thing that fires you up is just, bleh, it's gone flat and yeah, impotent. Mm. Um, I think libido actually means life force from memory. And I have a feeling that if it's impacting you on those areas, you are going to feel uh, feel that lack of life force. And if you have uh, Aries on any of the cardinal points, so that's the ascendant, the descendant, the uh, midheaven and the IC, it's out there. It's visible. You might, you might be feeling it and thinking you're doing a great job containing that, but everybody, everybody around you can see you. Um, yeah, and, and it, it's, it's something to be aware of that it does need to come out. It's just how we choose. Yes, um, and bringing that level of consciousness to what you're going to be experiencing as um, frustration is really the key to letting that out in appropriate ways and it kind of all blowing up in your face. Um, Aries is a fire sign. Mars is like that spark of impulse. And if you're feeling, you know, frustrated with a particular person or a particular situation um, and you rush, you take shortcuts, you're like, where's my instant gratification? I'm not waiting around here. Um, that is going to you know, you're just like, people are just going to like yell and explode potentially if they don't have that um, conscious thing. Well, this is how I'm feeling. How am I going to deal with it? Like um, Mars in Aries can sometimes lack um, that maturity and containment, but Saturn's on hand to help. Absolutely. Saturn's on hand to help and Saturn will bring any explosions to task. Absolutely. Yep. Yes. Um, when, when you have so much suppressed energy, of course, we're human, it has to come out. Um, it really is uh, focusing on the area of life that you choose to let it come out in. So I'd say, and I think most astrologers would agree, if you're going to explode with Saturn squaring Mars, do it behind closed doors in a padded room where there are no recordings or anyone that can see what you're about to go through. Um, Mars is red, hot energy and Saturn is cold, cold consequences. Yeah, absolutely. Like Mars will like, you know, be like kicking and screaming and carrying on having the um, aforementioned explosion and Saturn will just be like looking on with disdain. It, it, it's because it's not mature. It doesn't have sort of any, um, you know, what's the purpose of that explosion other than like, you know, like it's a tantrum effectively. It's, it's immature and it doesn't serve long-term interest. It's very, um, I've got my little keywords here is like that, that standoff between um, impulse and immediacy when um, Saturn wants preparation and patience. Like, and really, if you'd prepared, you wouldn't be having, um, you know, this unseemly um, meltdown. Absolutely. I really like, absolutely love that. So when, when you say that we can prepare for this kind of stuff, except when Mars is involved in Aries, it, it is impetuous. It is, and you may not even be aware. Okay, so let's, we're giving Mars a really bad rap because he's causing all of this. But Mars is, is that drive and determination that gets stuff done. And people like you, Kim, who have that Mars in Aries energy, you, you're a dynamo. So I've seen you in action and you're just moving forward. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. So 
what's going to happen here with the Mars retrograde is you're going to feel like you have the hand of Saturn stopping you, pushing you back. And we are uh, mature humans. We can see that this is brewing and we can try and contain it, but it must be, must be expressed. Yeah. As you're saying that, I'm having very immature thoughts and thinking back to the Simpsons episode where Lisa brings the salad and Homer sings, you don't make friends with salad. And my little song is you have to make friends with Saturn. you got to be friends with Saturn. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, being middle-aged, and we did talk about that a little bit before, um, we started recording. Like, I think that um, midlife period where you go through, you know, so many, um, you know, out-of-planet aspects and things, you step into a maturity. And if you haven't made friends with Saturn at that point, like, it, it, it's a progress it's um you know going through those multiple cycles and stepping up to the demands saturn makes of you you know through your 20s and your 30s and you know into your 40s and beyond that you gather those experiences you learn the lessons you acquire that maturity hopefully i've done that um enough to you know bring bring those two and get them to work together so that um the Saturnian strategies and the Martian tactics like work together because um, if they're doing different things, you are unlikely to make progress. Like you do need to do those um, small daily immediate things. You need to be prepared to um, capitalize on opportunities and step forward with that um, instinctive trust in yourself. But it also needs to serve that um, larger long-term picture. And this is where the good stuff can be squeezed out of this otherwise quite challenging time. Um, and that, yeah, that's not to say it's easy. It's not. Um, it's a square. When, when things go retrograde and have such a global impact, and we've had a year of it, 2020 has been, um, despite all of the other things happening. It was uh, at the beginning of the year noted as the year of retrogrades. They're big. And when you've got Mars in, in his own sign, he is so happy there. And you've got Saturn in her own sign and she is so happy there. So you've got two planets who are very, very at home with where they are right now. And you were right, uh, Mars, Mars goes, I'm bored. Saturn says, no, you have to do this. That is what is going to help you in the future. And Mars is already in the future. You, you have, I have, I loved your Simpsons analogy. I always think of Saturn as, oh, this is so old, I'm showing my age. Um, a cartoon of uh, Mickey Mouse as a sorcerer's apprentice. Oh, yes, I've seen him. He, he mucks around with the magic and he gets chased by brooms. So in my not head, experienced enough. Saturn, well, exactly. He's messing with Saturn, and Saturn is the broom, the glyph. <laughs> if you if you think of the glyph, it's actually a broom in motion. Indeed. And it's going to whip you on the bar, or you can use it to help sweep out anything that needs to be uh, anything frivolous and that's not beneficial for the future. Um, so this, this energy, we're all going through it, as you said in the beginning. Um, people who, who have that cardinal, the Aries or the Scorpio energy are really going to embody it. Um, but it's something that we can all work through and just be aware of. Uh, driving my son to school yesterday, I was cut off by more cars in one 15-minute trip than what I have had happen for years. Mm -hmm. So I used it as a lovely opportunity to explain this is Mars retrograde brewing to my 13 year old son who is not impressed at all um, because it's his ruling planet too. So it's trying to, hey, so see how everyone's really impatient here and, and nobody's really caring about what anyone else is doing. And that was a near miss um, as a, an analogy for life for a teenager. Yeah, well, it's very um, young man energy, isn't it? Like it's, um, you know, going out and adventure and like, you know, seeing the thing you want and um, yeah, going after it. But um, 
yeah, there there is that um, need to to slow down and consider the consequences of that um, impulsive need um, to 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 grab the thing. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, really, Saturn isn't very good at thinking of other people either. Saturn is very ambitious and very driven to this is the right thing to do. If it hurts you now, it's irrelevant because it is the right and correct thing to do for future you. Um, and so it's interesting watching the dance with these two. Yeah. Actually, now you mentioned it, Saturn does prefer to operate alone. It, mm. It's that, that coldness. It's like, yeah, I, I don't need other people. Um, and as the leader, Saturn goes, I can do this better than everyone else. So off you go, people. Leave it yeah. with me and here are the rules. <laughs> Ooh, and then Mars goes, no, I'm not obeying the rules. <laughs> Mars, mm. Mars is doing a lot more than saying no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm picturing some hand gestures. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I'm kicking. Absolutely. Um, it's interesting times. It really is. This year keeps loading up the difficult sections, if you say. And we all knew as astrologers that the last quarter of the year was going to be hectic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not, in, not in a moving forward, it's busy, it's coming up to Christmas kind of way, hectic in an internalised way. There's no doubt about that it's um, challenging and I guess that's putting a, a bit of a gloss onto what for some people are going to be really shitty experiences like at that collective level and also in their personal lives. Um, yeah, there is like a cooling off in like relationships, like, you know, things will flare up and then just kind of die off. Like um, Mars also has that um, severing and cutting energy. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to, as you mentioned in the beginning, um, I heard of an elderly neighbour yesterday who was trying to do something rather young. Um, and elderly is Saturn and young is Mars and is now trapped into state because uh, they, he, he broke his leg, snapped it, clearly oh. snapped it. So that is such a vivid example uh, of that. And I have Mars natally in the third house. So I went, there's the first one. And you said you had heard of somebody with high blood pressure, which is very Martian as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it came on very suddenly. Um, and there is a suddenness about, um, you know, Mars in Aries, even that, um, even with the slowing down, um, Aries is a cardinal sign, um, Capricorn's in a cardinal sign. These signs, like, start things, they, they spark them up and, um, yeah, make things happen. Um, so, yeah, there will be those kind of sudden plot plot twists in a way not surprising though um because saturn's very much about like consequences of actions and in the case of your um neighbor um he he did a thing and you know perhaps he like reached too far or like forgot that he was an old guy and yeah just yeah yeah um, bounce. I, can, I can imagine his uh lovely wife saying don't do that you shouldn't be doing that. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. And I mean, Mars is is severing, as you said, Kim, but it's also hot. It's that burning, yeah. So uh, be careful around sharp knives and hot things. Um, in, in a Mars remediation, I would usually advise somebody to really get in the kitchen if that's where their inclination lies and learn how to how to bring all of this stuff out, cook the hot spicy foods, chop up the chilies with the very sharp knife. Um, at the moment, I would be saying put on metal gloves before doing <laughs> anything with knives and then put on heat proof gloves before doing any. This is a, a thing where you get accidentally slice something open that's not vegetables. Uh, this is where you grab the lid to the saucepan and it's boiling hot. Yeah, you forgot your oven mitt. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and it's those little things. So it might not be the huge things. If this Mars isn't triggering off your chart, it will be those little things. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, and um, fun times, but keep the Band-Aids on hand. And the 
<laughs> yes. And um, yeah, maybe have a little stack of I'm sorry cards. <laughs> Essential for Mars in Aries, do I hear? Uh, look, could be, I don't know. Let's let's get into the horoscopes and um, see what's what for who who's who around the around the zodiac. Oh, so we must start with Aries. Because... Uh, look, you know, we would be remiss not to. Um, so for Mars in Aries, you can um, use your either if your sun is in Aries or if it's your rising sign. Um, it will work both ways. We, Kim and I both prefer it if you use this as your rising, if Aries is your rising sign. Um, so you've got Mars in the first house and sat wow. in the tent, Kim, like, what's going on here? This is huge. It, it is huge. Like, so what have I got here? I said, like, you know, especially with Mars stationing retrograde, like your impulse to go forward and accomplish your life goals, um, gets like pulled back um and you have to run to like the other end of the train the the you know the locomotive that you were powering forward for those goals you were just not able to push forward with the same speed and enthusiasm and probably the people around you are going to go oh what's wrong with you because you're gonna feel like you've lost a lot of your um martian mojo and there's with the um square to the planets in capricorn it's almost like these larger well almost like it is it's larger systemic um you know things like governments or like work your boss authority figures just kind of they're telling you no and yeah. you're probably going to want to chuck a tanty being an aries or aries rising but don't do it absolutely do it. i i in my notes have a very similar watch for public meltdowns <laughs> um it, it may be your reputation that's that's impacted as a consequence of your actions at this time. So Saturn is your reputation and Mars is actions. Um, and you do feel like they're being thwarted. It might be as simple as uh, you left your coffee cup in the kitchen at work and it's been an ongoing thing and some Saturnian figure says, we're going to change the rules, we're going to fix this, and it makes you want to explode. It's probably not going to be that small. Um, but it's not a good time to quit so you your natural inclination will be to tell them to shove it it's not the time to do it because the rewards for your hard work that you're not getting acknowledgement for now they're coming but you need to get through this yeah well jupiter stations direct in that um career sector for aries rising mid-september right when mars goes retrograde so like it's imperative not to blow a gasket before um you know someone throws you a bone like uh, yeah you've been working really hard since um mid-may and you know maybe there will be like a little glimmer of hope um rather than a complete, um, you know, Saturnian smack down there. Absolutely. And now my fingers for that Jupiter. you've got Saturn in the 10th house. You've been through the ringer with your career. We won't go into detail, but just know that we all are on your team. We feel you. Um, and hang in there because you, your rewards are coming. So if you feel impetuous, keep your eye on that prize. Go for a jog. Jog it off. Go for a swim. Just do something that you know is going to cool off that um yeah hot headed um emotionality that um yeah, yeah you're holding in your body so if how are we going to advise this client or this person sweat you want you want to be doing any activity that's going to make you sweat um because then it's expressing it's mars is hot and sweaty um get it out mm. it's not at work yeah the sign that prefers not to be hot and sweaty, Taurus. Um, Taurus, what have we got here? Um, okay, so that will be, oh, I haven't written the house, but that'll be in the 12th house. So it's a lot more internalised, um, this, this transit for Taurus. Um, but I think the, the caution here is that it's possible to gloss over the um, changes that are happening at that, um, you know, kind of intangible transpersonal level. Um, so 
let yourself slow down. Let yourself have that quiet time because there's like a sense of restlessness that um, is just out of reach for you that, um, you know, may be causing things like sleep disturbances or, um, you know, you're seeing like little signs and you're like, what's that? And it's like a, a mild irritation just on the periphery of um, your consciousness. And it may bring up issues um, around your um, beliefs, um, structured religions and philosophies are like being tested. So like that, that inner sense of peace um, rubs up against the more overt traditional belief systems. And yeah, I'm, I tell a Taurus to be patient. Um, you know, they are good at that. Um, but sitting with discomfort is um, more challenging. So, you know, watch for the spiritual bypassing and acknowledge what's coming up for you. Um, yeah, it, it, it's not your imagination. It is a thing. Absolutely. Give your attention. Absolutely. And I mean, you've got this energy going from the 12th house to the ninth house. These are not energetic houses. Um, and, and I love what you said about, uh, faith, you really will be questioning. We've lived through a year where human suffering has been exposed. We've, we've all, even people who have been in previously comfortable situations uh, of privilege, have had their control of life and situations taken off them. Um, and the, the navel gazing uh, uh, and the frustration and of your impotence here is what I would be uh, watching out for as a sign that this is this needs to come up and be dealt with. Um, and I'm just uh, looking here at my notes. Um, just, it seems that you may be suffering a lack of faith in the future. Mm -hmm. um, it's grinding on you. So uh, my recommendation here, Kim, is to sleep, nap. Nap, nap, nap. I know a few Taurus Risings. I'm lucky enough to know a few Taurus Risings. And these people have been burning the candle at both ends lately, which is very interesting um, because that's not their standard operating procedure, which is why they're reaching out to me and saying, what's going on? So um, you're a Taurus Rising or a Taurus Sun. You need to sleep. You need to really or lay around decadently eating chocolate or drinking red wine, but really taking time to do what you think is self-care. These aren't easy houses that these planets are working from. Um, and you may feel that martyrish energy of taking on all of the world's troubles. Mm. Uh, release them. It's okay with a nap. <laughs> Well, and like solutions often come um, like yeah there's not enough napping in the world is there no. and yeah it does um yeah the the solution here actually might be not in the conscious not in the conscious mind but it's like back of house so letting that back of house space do the work absolutely absolutely all right gemini okay our busy bees all right, yeah, so financial commitments and emotional investments in friendships. That's um, my big thing. Like, yeah, you want to whoop it up with your friends, but, geez, you've got some responsibilities to your yeah. partner, to, like, you know, yourself. Um, you know, there's probably a bit of, like, um, you know, parental stuff there too, like um, inheritances, like looking after, um, you know, the... yeah, it's cross-generational yeah power, which is often um caught up in um yeah money and inheritances and things like you know you want to blow all that off that is heavy stuff and you know frankly you're probably sick of it it's been cramping your gemini style for um yeah quite a few years now I yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but like you know like it, it's really to me like are you getting good returns on what you're investing and like yeah you might be like having fun but is that giving you what you're seeking at a long-term level it's real like yeah you could go either way on this and you probably have been being a gemini you're probably pinging between um you know partying and being your irresponsible i'm um, having a great time and oh gosh now i've got to go you know 
do my taxes. I've got to like check on my superannuation, my investments. Um, you know, what's going to happen with my mortgage? Like it's, it's heavy compared to like, woo, Friday night, um, you know, out with the, out with your mates. Like, and that oscillation, I think is going to be coming to a crunch point for Gemini and something. You got to bring some balance there. Um, it's, it's definitely a time where your debt to society as oh. such has really, uh, come to the forefront. Um, and, and I, I picked up on that too, Kim, it's that life or death attitude. It really is. And, and Gemini is a mutable sign. So they're not really inclined to the deep dramatics that the eighth house really wants them to jump into. Um, and, and you may also just find yourself, um, taking a leadership role in groups, but then really not enjoying the responsibility that has come with that. Um, or it could be as simple as they owe you money and they ain't paying up. Um, but it's definitely, um, a good time to go over your insurance. Have a look fun. into, yeah, oh, so much fun. <laughs> Hours of fun. But the, it's, a, it's a good time because you've got that Mars energy slowing down and uh, you take the opportunity. It's frustrating. Insurance is frustrating. Taxes are frustrating. Mars retrogrades frustrating. Use them wisely. Uh, <laughs> and I would suggest if all else fails with these beautiful Gemini souls, uh, tell your friends and anyone else who wants you to uh, get out there and play that you dropped your phone in the toilet and it's just not, you, you're out of contact. It's, there's nothing happening. Um, and really just take time to uh, have, a, have a little gander at what you want from where you found yourself. It's not easy but it's worth doing. Let's just leave those, yeah, darling yeah. twins with that. <laughs> yeah. And yet Mercury retrograde coming up too. Psst. Yes, but I had to really narrow it in because I could see these little things in the future and yeah. No. Push a domino and away they go. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, heads up Gemini and on to Cancer. Um, Mars retrograde in your career sector. Wow, that's going to be super fun. You probably were sniffing out promotions and like some hot projects that you were really going to sink your teeth into. And I don't know, like if you're, you know, business partner or, you know, whoever was going to team you up on that at work and it's just gone. <sighs> Sorry, guys, um, somebody in your life. And, you know, maybe it's your partner that says, well, no, um, that's not going to work for me. Um, you working late nights or, you know, being interstate for weeks at a time. Like, there's there's some rub there and it's interpersonal. It's, um, yeah, partnerships. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a time of reevaluating those workplace partnerships and also um, the intersection of your career and how that affects your um, yeah personal relationships with your like spouse, um, mentors, collaborators. There's some serious friction that's going to be picked over in coming weeks. Absolutely, I I saw this and went, oh, do you really want to be divorced? By the <laughs> it was it's ouch, it's visible, and and this has been brewing for a while uh, in the seventh house with that. Saturn going uh, retrograde and but you've also got the Pluto and the Jupiter there and they've really copped it um, so the tension there with partnerships and it might not be your marriage it, it might be a, a work partnership as Kim said but it's definitely um, aggravating someone one of you is not coping very well um, try and avoid public blow-ups would be my uh, oh, advice yeah. And he likes to see those. Yeah. And you can, you can really, this is that potent Mars energy at the top of your chart. Uh, your face is probably going red without you even realizing from anger. So be aware of um, that's coming out. And I mean, we're talking about cancer here. These are our lunar ruled 
um, cohort and they, they don't want those emotions out there on display. The crab is tough on the exterior and soft on the inside. So their partner knows where that softness is and knows how to dig that in to get the reaction. Yeah. So uh, I'd be aware of that. Um, and uh, I, I made a frivolous comment here about separate beds for the next six months, maybe. But, but it, it is, of course, very serious when you're living through it. Um, but yeah. yeah, I got, well, I mean, you've got Jupiter here. I, and, you know, given that those planets Saturn and Pluto have been like grind in that area for like a long time. And I think, um, yeah, this is kind of like one final test for the relationship. But I think Jupiter brings the protective quality. I think for a lot of people, like it's not going to be those um one-on-one -on -one, like interpersonal stuff just because it's something so public and so careering and yeah it could be like a public disagreement with a partner like in a restaurant or something but yeah I think that emphasis on work is a real thing and I think because there's been so many changes around people's careers this year pandemic blah 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 um that I think work is more likely to be the trigger than Although, you know, obviously, yeah, Absolutely. partnership's a part of it. Absolutely. Um, I, I feel um, wherever you've got Jupiter is generally such a, a beneficial place. With it in Capricorn, it's still, it's still, a, it's still Jupiter. But I, I love what you said about one last go around because Capricorn is hard work. You, you will get what, reap what you sow as such. And Jupiter is big. Jupiter, ah. Jupiter wants to expand. So uh, these decisions that are being made have probably been brewing around for a while. And this Mars is just going to be the thing that tips you over the edge in one way or another. Um, yeah, so good luck to all of our Cancer risings and suns. Yeah, make yeah. sure your shells are like, um, yeah, watertight. <laughs> yeah. Loud, loud, angry music in the car on the way to and on the way home. I like that. Yeah, releasing some of that um, pent up emotional thing in that, you know, yeah. little car pod. Mm. Yeah. All right, Leo. <sighs> Well, okay, so this is, this has got a bit of a worky vibe too, doesn't it? Um, yeah. But like the trigger is, uh, you know, you've been grinding it out every single day and like now you're like, do I believe in this? Is it meaningful? Like, you know, like where where's my passion gone? And it, it's just going to like drop out of it. Um, yeah, if you had kind of some goals around travel or study or like, you know, fresh horizons, whatever that means for you, um, it, it's, you know, your overcommitments to work and or perhaps you just come back to your senses and you're just not going to be able to like meet those daily responsibilities if like you can't afford to extend yourself in the way that you'd hoped. And that's the real bummer for um, our sunny solar Leo. So, yeah. Yeah, another way that I thought of this is like, you know, you've got these spiritual beliefs, you've had this, um, you know, philosophical structure that's, um, you know, supported you and fired you up and like, you know, kept you kicking those goals and things. And then like, just like the relentless facts of every day um, have ground this down and you discovered that you've built yourself like a... A straw man like it, it's hollow like there's nothing there for you to believe in so this is um yeah not comfortable for for mm. like yeah our optimistic leos no and it's definitely the castles in the sky kind of thing it is um coming from the ninth house to the sixth we have again these houses aren't strong they're, and I mean, we all love the ninth house as astrologers, but they're, they're not a place of strength. So you're tired, you're weary. Um, but the, the questioning the point of everything up to now um, was what I had noted down. It feels like you've had your wings clipped this year. The ninth house wants to travel, whether it's from the mind or physically, and Leo wants to shine. Leo is the sun. And we're just coming out of Leo season. By the time Mars goes retrograde, it will be 
Virgo season, which is, it's a detail season and the limelight is not on Leo anymore. So that's always a little bit of a struggle for um, our sun. <laughs> so understated there, Sandra. <laughs> Just a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> Well, as you know, I have a certain Leo placement that means that I really feel this. I really do. Um, but it's, it's that you definitely be questioning your faith, whether that is your faith in your spirituality, your religion, or um, your, your education so far, uh, or just your faith in, in the long view because the ninth house is the long view. It's where we learn to understand things. Um, and uh, you really need to focus that energy on Saturn's been in your sixth house for a long time. Don't give up now. Yeah, chop wood, carry water, Leo. Absolutely. And, and it is like, it may just be as simple as you've worked so hard on your fitness this year and you've just realized that you're not going to get to get out there and travel the world and show off your hot summer bod because <laughs> restrictions aren't lifting. And I want it to be that simple for us all. It's not going to be, um, but definitely um, take the time here to question, really use it. And you will be frustrated. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's a frustration that most other people will be feeling because of the situation we found ourselves in this year. Um, and my advice here was power walking somewhere new. Get the, the headphones in and get going on your own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting times, but for our, our Leo Risings and Leo Suns, it's, it's okay. You'll get there. It's a behind the scenes kind of thing. You'll be right. All right, let's let's move on to Virgo. Oh, great! Yeah, this is fun. Um, Long-term finances are like right in focus, and it's um yeah, it's time for an overhaul, really. What you've been doing no longer works, and um, yeah, you need to find the balance between satisfying your immediate needs and also fulfilling those long-term goals. And I've got some pruning is probably necessary. Um, and your hobbies the fun um the fun budget and children's activities are all up for assessment these aren't going to be easy decisions um you know virgo's an earth sign like as much as virgo has that um reputation for you know working hard and diligently you know virgo does that for a reason because they want to enjoy it so um having that taken away and having to make those ruthless decisions about um yeah what can be spent on um uh, isn't going to be comfortable um yeah no. and and kim virgo being it's it's earth but it's mutable so the details are usually fun yeah that, oh, they do enjoy that yeah. yeah very much um and i mean straight away when looking at this placement if you've got kids you are feeling like an atm atm like you really are it, it, and that might be an area where you need to focus and, and really streamline what's going on there. Um, and you may also feel like the daily grind, death and taxes and all the rest of it, usually is appealing to get to the nitty gritty and sort that stuff out, has killed this creative muse within you. Because the fifth house is, it's where we want to create, we want to express. The eighth house, you don't really get to express nicely. I'm just thinking, and yeah, the ass is going to fall out of your sex life too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, I would say that there would definitely be some issues in that area. Uh, I, I wrote that it would perhaps be best to indulge and express uh, behind the scenes really go on your own perhaps <laughs> um and uh as we flippantly discussed yesterday i think it was um lube up it's it's ouch it's hot <laughs> satin's dry like don't don't whether it is your sex life or it is other areas of your life really get some juice in there to to make it not such a tight uh, painful ride. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I mean, it's it's a part of life from the fifth house to the eighth house. It had to be mentioned. But, True. Um, yeah. True. Let's move along. We'll leave that to people's <laughs> imaginations. Um, have fun with that, Virgo. Um, let's move along to Libra. Oh, okay. So, like, Libra is Mars's opposite sign. So, um, all this fun and frivolity is happening in your relationship sector. Um, so, if you are in a relationship, it's been galloping along at a cracking place, you're getting plenty of what Virgo's not getting. Um, and then all of a sudden, boom, it grinds to a halt. There's frustration and uncertainty about, um, you know, the relationship itself or a relationship goal you had or the level of commitment here. Um, and Libra being Libra, um, there's always questions. It's like, oh, do you love me? Do you this? Do you that? Trying to push forward and try to make things happen, don't do it. That is just kind of like going to be incredibly counterproductive. Um, yeah, the other sort of thing that I had down for Libra was that um, with Jupiter moving forward in that um, home and family sector, you might get some good news there, but then your partner's just going to be like, whatever, I'm, I'm just not into it. And like that is probably going to feel like, pretty pretty shitty for a Libra because a Libra needs to feel um you know like they've got people in their life they need that affinity that um that exchange and when you know the person you thought was gonna like you know be parting along by your side or like commiserating you like it's just like nothing takes all the fun out of it I did note that down um Kim, this energy gives me the vibe of one person in this partnership feels like they're being cuddled by a boa constrictor. All of a sudden, you've got this, everything's been going on beautifully. When Mars comes into a house, it, it brings good energy and it's in Aries. So you're like, yes. Uh, and this uh, Mars retrograde, it, it's that's the exact image I got was just someone wants to be free and someone else is holding on too tight. Um, and you, you really do. You've got that tempers frame doors are slamming. And because that Saturn is in the fourth, those doors are slamming loud enough to actually shake the foundations of your house. It's mm. uh, your partner's Saturnian energy. Their lack of enthusiasm um, is going to great. It's, um, it was uh, a definite standout there with our lovely Libra buddies. Um, my, my advice here was to get some big sheets of paper out and start planning your renos. <laughs> yeah. It's because it is that fourth house energy. And um, if your partner doesn't want to play, do it yourself. You've got this for a while because you are Libran after all. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's tough times. Again, Libra is one of our cardinal signs. So they've been through the grind. Um, and this could be the thing, this little Mars could be the thing that tips something over the edge, but it could also be the thing that encourages the big clean out and, and uh, refresh. Yeah. All right. Libra. Let's Skip across to Scorpio, a, another Mars ruled sign. So this is really um, big news for Scorpio as well. Um, right, what have I got here? So this is happening between the 6th and the 3rd. This is kind of like between what you think and who you are at like an everyday local level. And, you know, it's what you do every day. Um, like, you know, you've had your rose colored glasses on and a bit of impulsive Aries optimism, like as far as your mindset goes. But by mid-September, when Mars puts on the brakes, you're going to have to face facts. Um, it's, like you're not, like you just can't keep going at the pace that you've been going. Um, you need to like slow things down um, mentally as well as as far as your work and daily routine. Perhaps you've been like, pushing health wise and that can be like a mental health or a physical health um there's going to be blowback if yeah. you ignore any warning signs um i think jupiter's station look i'm 
just see that as like a little <laughs> grain of like help. Um, like, cause it's not all doom and gloom. There is good stuff that you can do here. And I think Jupiter brings like a, a sense of meaning about any changes that you're um, forced to make and like learning opportunities. So it also can like alleviate some of the, the heaviness um, if you are sort of like tipping over into um, like, you know, depression and things like that and just like general sluggishness. Um, yeah, so there is a sense of clarity available if you do what needs to be done, but like doing that thing isn't going to be easy. But once you do it, it's great. Yeah, absolutely, Kim. It is very much about um, these negative thoughts that may have been coming. And um, if you've had uh, Mars move into your sixth house, you've noticed the pace of life has just picked up. Um, and that might have meant that anything to do with your actual well-being, your health, uh, has had to take a back seat. And as you touched on, absolutely with the negative thoughts, because Saturn has been there in your third house, which is a communication house, for so long. Um, it may just be uh, tempering your communication style uh, so that it's working better for you asking for help yeah yeah oh absolutely um but the thing that i really got out of this is knowing your limits you you really do mars in the sixth house um it's not really that bad if it wasn't going retrograde it's it yeah. weeps on through there usually in six weeks and you are whoa so much progress yeah accomplished so much yeah and this time you feel you probably feel that you've accomplished look look at me i'm doing great because mars by the time it stations is nearly at the end of that house and then boom something's gonna happen um and it, it's play nice with anyone who is under you. So that's your tradies, that's that's mm -hmm. your service people. And, and really just be aware that your drive and determination here might not be in sync with anyone else's. And watch your health. It, it's, yeah. Totally. Um, when someone asks you how you're doing as a service person, they really don't want to hear about your crap. <laughs> just to say, Great, thanks. How was yours? And keep going. Yeah, remember you're a Scorpio. Don't tell them <laughs> anything. <laughs> All right. Now, Sagittarius, that's that, um, you know, being a mutable sign, that's that um, finances and pleasure playing off against each other. Um, yeah, you had some plans, but the bank balance says no. And like, the bank balance has been saying no for a long time. So there's that temptation to, um, you know, perhaps gamble, take like risks. Um, but just remember, it's a big fat no. Um, yeah, I, I don't have a lot to flesh out there. You want to go out and have loads of fun and not worry about tomorrow. But no, it's just so much no here. It's like, um, you know, terrible. Um, yeah, so hugs to my saggy friends. Um, I did want to say, though, that with Jupiter going forward in that income sector, um, something that perhaps was delayed since May, um, you know, can move forward at this time. So there are rewards for being responsible, but that temptation is is pretty powerful um, with, yeah, the, those Martian shortcuts and, um, yeah, think long term. What would your grandmother say? Like, uh, like you know... That, that's my take on this. It's really kind of basic and essential. Absolutely. I took one look at this, Kim, and went, oh, our poor Saggy cohort. Oh, because this is, this is a sign that wants to get out there. And they're not doing it to be on display. They're doing it because they just need to be out there. Um, and, and this second house situation is there's, there's a lack of resources available to them at the moment. Um, and I feel after looking at this, I just went, 
these people are really suffering with these restrictions. And we focus so much on the cardinal signs and, and the grind that they've been going through. But our freedom loving Sag buddies really have been under the pump here. Mm -hmm. And um, it might have been that there's been savings in the second house because they're not able to, to go out there and spend as they usually do. Um, and they just decide to blow it all on a mad online <laughs> show. Yeah. Um, and, and not being able to do what they want. Sag, whatever area you've got Sag in your chart, you want to do what you want. And it's a mutable sign. So it's not thinking too deep or having an argument about it, it's doing. Um, so I would say, uh, don't be reckless. As yeah. Kim said, don't be reckless. Just keep your eye on the prize because any impulsive actions that you take, there there will be a big kick in the butt. Long-term consequences. Yeah. Um, and uh, my tip here, because we've got Mars going through uh, the fifth house, so this is creativity, this is expression, get into, get in, book into an online rave, like dance in your lounge room, get that out, but it's also kids. And I just wanted to uh, drop a little suggestion. Um, be nice to your kids. You're going to be explosive. You're going to have the, the they're coming at you explosively. Oh, but let them run. Yeah. Let it, don't restrain. Give them the freedom that you are being denied currently or start popping a little bit of money away into the future therapy bank account because <laughs> you're going to pay the piper one day. Um, but really, as Kim said, big hugs here. We're, we're feeling you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ah. Capricorn, we won't hug you. You're not really into it. Um, yeah, so this... Jupiter going direct here for you, like, you know, you might be able to, um, you know, see, see the positive side um, with Jupiter moving forward. Um, Mars in your fourth house, there could be some harsh words with a family member or that, um, you know, Renault with your liberal partner grinds to a halt. <laughs> um, um, or you might like think, you know, just be having second thoughts about where you want to go. Um, perhaps you had a move planned um, and, you know, just feel that there needs to be some further consideration for um, the, the stable long-term outcome that you're looking for. Um, I, yeah, Jupiter helps you out a lot because it, it's first house. And, um, yeah, again, something that you, um, you know, put effort into in the first half of the year can bring some sense of satisfaction and comfort. And that may be feeding into the um, change of heart that you have around, you know, where you want to go and where you want to put down roots. Um so those insights that you get can help ease that tension about, um, yeah, your home and family life. But um, you need to be clear and realistic about what you want, not too pessimistic, um, because there are challenges and, you know, you might be a little bit challenge weary. Um, but <laughs> a little. <laughs> a little. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, up, Cap. <laughs> you are nearly there. You are nearly there. You are so close to the end of this grind that has been going on. Um, I really got that too, Kim, that there's too much activity at home all of a sudden. And uh, sorry, it's not all of a sudden. It's been there for a while, but it has now done something and you're like, I've had enough. It might be um, that you haven't had enough time to commit to yourself because all of these uh, planets in cap moving through your first house, you've had to restructure constantly your life, your opinion of yourself, the way that you view the world. Um, Capricorn itself is, uh, I would say, rather than skewed to pessimism, it is grounded in really cold, hard facts. And if you happen to come across to everyone else's pessimism, well, that's everyone else's problem. They need to get a grip on life is tough. So when you've got this, this Mars energy in the fourth house, um, something has put a hot poker up your, in your foundations, in, up your butt. Um, and 
the whole cap energy of past actions bring future consequences. Um, I feel out of all of the planets that are going to get a kick out of Jupiter moving forward, it's going to be our cap friends. They're going to love it. Uh, and they're not afraid of hard work. And Jupiter in Cap is hard work. So um, just really hang in there. What date does Jupiter go forward? Because that's the date we want to give. The 13th, the 14th is just after Mars retrograde starts. So yeah, there's almost like a, a bit of a turnaround here. Yeah, um, and, and really grab, shifts. Yeah, grab that energy. Um, my, you have been so responsible, like all these cat people have been so responsible. They're basically born that way and resilient. Um, so give yourself a pat on the back. And my advice here was to redo the home office. And oh my gosh, buy yeah. yourself a flash chair, maybe like a racing car one. Uh-huh. And I want them to prep one wall for all the awards and certificates that are coming their way very soon, very, very soon. Um, and it'll give them a passion project and a, and a time alone. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, pop, pop a lock on that office door. Keep the kids out. <laughs> yeah. Now we're off to Aquarius. Um, all right, so I've got here that they're going to need all the charm that they can muster to avoid um, verbal conflicts and differing opinions. Yeah. Um, it's almost like you're not going to be able to, like, keep a lid on those private thoughts. Um, also, too, you're going to be aware of hidden agendas and subconscious motives. So that might be your own stuff or, hang on, Susie did that thing last week and now she's doing this. Mm, what's going on? So the thing is you could like tie yourself into a mental knot or you could untie it so like using this in a productive way um is gonna be tricky but like getting some alone time to like think things out um you could go down a conspiracy rabbit hole there is that chance um, <laughs> but like you don't have to like your options aren't um aren't completely locked in there um, but yeah, look into your underlying beliefs. And when you get like a theory, dig a little deeper. Um, and, you know, with Jupiter going direct in that sector, you can like help raise awareness and understanding of whatever situation um, you're unpacking um, and like move it forward in like real world terms, not just like that, you know, kind of weird mental space. But you've got to sort the mental space out first before you can make a difference in the um, world around you. So that's your job, this couple, yeah, this this Mars transit. Fun times, Aquarius. Deep for your heart. Jeez, I got that. I was like, oh my gosh, don't fall into a hole of unsolved mysteries. Don't do that to yourself. Focus on, on working through. And by... Um, I just was thinking when you were saying that and I was reading my stuff, they released the latest uh, Unsolved Mysteries um, series on Netflix when Saturn moved into Aquarius recently mm -hmm. and everyone loved it. And then that's just kind of dipped under the radar because Saturn is out of Aquarius. So be prepared, everybody, when Saturn moves through Aquarius to be hit with a gamut of uh, Unsolved mystery shows or podcasts and such. Um, but yeah, uh, it's assertive or is it bossy? Aquarius, mm. are you are go you, either way? Yeah, are you clearly expressing uh, some f uh, strong opinions or are you really forcing them down other people's throat? Um, I don't have too much more to add to that, um, but the Saturn in your third house is um, siblings, cousins, neighbours, mm. um, and Perhaps being with Mars. This would be the worst time to like try and negotiate a fence or some tree lopping or something with a neighbor. Just yeah. like leave it till summer. Yeah, sorry, it was Mars in the third house. I'm tripping over myself here. But yeah, don't don't push it with your neighbors or your siblings or your cousins. Um, I would advise uh, to write the angry letters to your local newspaper. Um, anonymously, anonymously. Do some trolling yeah. online. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, with Saturn in the 12th house, you want to keep it low key. No, nothing can be traced back to you. Oh, we're... yeah, completely anonymous through your VPN. Yeah, yeah, well, we, yeah. <laughs> 
we are all over how to get through that. Come Aquarius on. is all over the tech. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it, it's just don't be too forceful with what you are sure is right. Aquarius is fixed. That doesn't mean you're right. <laughs> if you're not an Aquarius, don't tell them. <laughs> they don't like it. Yeah. Moving right along to Pisces. Um, oh, poor Pisces. Um, yeah, Mars retrograde in your income sector. When you're getting paid. Um, that is is like the big thing. Um, yeah, cash flow, resources. Um, and, you know, if that's fine for you, it might come down to self-esteem. And so you've had some bright ideas about collaborating and boosting your bank account, setting, you know, fun goals and projects with um, groups. And they've hit a snag. Um, negotiations are slow over coming months. Um, but I think there's the opportunity to set up the um, structural frameworks rather than like the nitty gritty details. Um, yeah. So Jupiter is there in your friendship sector as well and it offers some positivity and that sense of collaboration so i don't quite see this as like a you know a falling out as such over money although that is a possibility if that's been part of a larger longer term story with a particular friend but getting your boundaries right over friends and money is really important um, when Jupiter goes direct, like check in um, around your beliefs around that shared goal and just make sure it's all aligned. And um, yeah, then basically get to work on that long, hard grind to manifest your collective vision. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to say here, if you are a Pisces rising or a Pisces sun, you've generally just stumble into these excellent little opportunities. That's how life is for you. you. You see an opportunity and then you grab it or you just move on to the next thing. So I feel that the, the Mars in the second house, if you've had that, she'll be right, mate, attitude to restrictions or, or to uh, anything that's been happening in your 11th house, which is groups and associations and networks of people, uh, you're going to be feeling a little bit impetuous here with what's happening in your second house. You've, it's problematic for you. And so uh, you're, you may be floundering or you may just be going, I've put in all this effort for so long and I'm getting nothing back. Um, don't throw it in yet would be my advice. You were born under a lucky star kind of energy surrounds um, my Piscean friends and family. And um, their usual pick-me-ups aren't available. So to go and buy yourself a little happy, it's not going to work right now because you're going to have these, these long-term things in the background. So it will make you feel better for a second. It's not going to make you feel better in the long term. Uh, yeah. So I'd say keep on keeping on. Knuckle down and do the work. Yeah, like exactly. the rewards are there, they're just not there yet. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have a choice. And with Jupiter in Capricorn, it probably has felt like a bit of a slog. It's it's the the good luck, the opportunities, the beneficial things that have usually just popped up are feeling like hard work and um, the thankless task. Uh, for little reward is what screams out to me. Um, and once again, my suggestion here is uh, a nap because you have Pisces uh, dominant. But also I was thinking, what would I advise here? Um, I would advise going on a massive online shopping spree, putting everything in your cart, but don't hit buy. Oh, tempting, tempting, tempting. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> It's, it's, Make sure you don't have a glass of wine when you do this. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely not. That's what you do. Nephew, have to nephew, uh, in Pisces at the moment, definitely not. No, you <laughs> do not need it. Yeah. Well, Sandra, we've made our way around the zodiac, and wasn't that amazing? That was so much fun. I what? loved it. Let's do and, this again. I really hope that um, after listening to this, that people will have a, a better understanding of not just what area of life it's happening, Mars is retrograding, um, and then getting aggravated by Saturn, but also it's, it's going to end. 
we'll absolutely we'll get that's the there. best thing about the planets is like you can see that this situation that we're going in that we're going to be like you know feeling like tight and restricted around well it loosens i mean you know these are planetary cycles this is um yeah nothing lasts forever change is inevitable the good times come the good times go the bad times come the bad times go um and that's one of the things i love most about astrology is it helps us ride these um ride these waves absolutely so the takeout i get from uh, hearing your words of wisdom are hang in there for Jupiter. Jupiter. <gasps> Jupiter is about to go direct. Yeah, yeah. There, there is good stuff here. Um, yeah, you just kind of got to like trudge through a little bit of ick to, to come out with that gem. Yeah, and we are nearly at the end. We are so close to the finish line with um, that Capricorn lineup that has probably put so many of us in so many ways uh, under the grill. Um, and we've just got to really bite our, bite our time, bite our tongue, make ourselves sweat, lube up, and really take the time to go Mars is out. So I'm going to make it as little out as possible. Avoid the little pricks. <laughs> Let's leave it there. I hope you come back, Sandra. That I, I do want to do this again. <laughs> Absolutely. It has been great. Thank you so much, Kim. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, oh, hit like. Tell us all about your Mars and Saturn stuff in the comments. Yeah, we'd love to um, yeah, hear, hear what's going on for you. Absolutely. Bye.